Okay, let's continue our discussion. We're going to discuss today the six trig function ratios. That's right, I said there's six. In geometry, you were introduced to three, sine, cosine, and tangent. We're going to add three more onto that in just a few minutes. But let's go back and take a look. First and foremost, a right triangle becomes very important to us, and I just want to review that information. You have Pythagorean's theorem. If you remember, that you could use to find any side or the hypotenuse for a right triangle. And Pythagorean's theorem was stated as a squared plus b squared equals c squared. There's a, there's a whole other reason for that, but we're just going to use the algebraic representation for it. And in trigonometry, what we focus on is the angles and where we're standing. So for example, I don't know if you can see in the corner here, that's me standing at angle A. And if that's angle A, and I'm standing there, then this side would be opposite of angle A, and that's why I listed it as opposite side. And of course, this side would be adjacent because that means connected to or with. And then of course, the hypotenuse is always the side that's opposite the right angle. Now I've labeled the angles as angle A, angle B, and angle C, and I think you would agree that if I was standing up here at angle B, that the opposite side and the adjacent side would be different. But we'll talk about that more in just a minute. Now we're going to extend our discussion. For example, we're going to take Pythagorean's theorem and extend it to x, y, and r. Now why is that important is because we can then apply it to uh, an x, y coordinate system. And we know that that's called a rectangular coordinate system. And wherever x and y intersect, it forms a 90 degree angle. And again, that's going to become important to us a little bit later on. But if we look at the opposite side of angle A, we would notice then that we could call that y. Okay, And then the adjacent side, we could call it x. Now think about it. This would be our vertical side, and this would be our horizontal side. That's going to become important in just a few minutes. And if this was a point on the circle, then this, of course, would be the hypotenuse, or the distance from the center to the circle. Again, I'm just laying a foundation for what's to come. In which case, if I translated the Pythagorean theorem, it would simply be y squared plus x squared equals r squared, or for those of you that like keep everything in alphabetical order, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Now, if you go back to geometry, you recall a, I hope anyway, uh, a simple way of remembering the six trig, uh, excuse me, the three trig functions, sine, cosine, and tangent, Sokotoa, or Sokotoa. And basically what it said was, is that the sine for angle A was the ratio of the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse, which we're going to substitute in O over H. Cosine of angle A was the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse, which we're going to substitute in A over H. And tangent of angle A is the opposite side over the adjacent side, which we're going to substitute O over A. Now, that's how we get Sokotoa. Sine of my angle is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. Cosine of my angle is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent of my angle is opposite over adjacent. Now, if I make my uh, translation into x, y, and r, the sine of angle A is the vertical or opposite side over the radius, which is r. Cosine of angle A is the x, or horizontal component, over the radius, which is r. And tangent of my angle is the vertical over the horizontal, or y over x. Now, again, these three ratios, we're going to start making our move a little bit later on. Now, if you remember, I said there were six trig ratios. The three that you're familiar with is sine, cosine, and tangent. But there are also what we call reciprocal functions or reciprocal ratios. Now, the word reciprocal just means what? It means to take the numerator and the denominator and just rotate them or flip them, some people say. So therefore, if sine of angle A is opposite over hypotenuse, which we're going to say O over H, then its reciprocal would be what? H over O. Okay. If the cosine of angle A is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, or A over H, then the secant would be the hypotenuse over the adjacent. And if my tangent of angle A was opposite over adjacent, then my cotangent would be adjacent over opposite. Now I'm going to go ahead and write these out for you. We're going to see cosecant and then secant, 
and then cotangent. You know, it's interesting to note that you notice the CO that's in front, cosecant, cotangent, and of course cosine over here. The reason why it's co in front of it is the complement of, and we'll get into that in more detail a little bit later on. But let's focus on our six trig function values. So the directions say find the six trig function values for angle A. Okay, so here is angle A, and I'm going to put a little uh, marker there to denote this is where I'm standing. This is very important for you to understand. This is me. I'm at angle A. And I'm going to go ahead and list my triangle now. The 4 is now my opposite side, so I'm going to put my op here. The 3 is now my adjacent side, and the 5, of course, is my hypotenuse. Now, I'm going to go ahead and list my six trig functions. So I've got the sine of angle A, cosine of angle A, and tangent of angle A. Now, I'm also going to go ahead and list my reciprocal functions or my reciprocal ratios. Sine always goes with cosecant. Very important that you learn to keep things in order like this. It'll help you when you're trying to find or trying to think through this a little bit later on. Cosine and secant go together and tangent and cotangent. Something I tell all of my trig students is that the S's and the C's go together. The S's can't go together and the C's can't go together. Okay, at a, at, hopefully. And a tangent and cotangent, that's always easy to do. So, let's see if we can figure out their values. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so the opposite side is 4, the hypotenuse is 5, so therefore we're going to end up with 4 fifths. So the sine of angle A has a value of 4 fifths. Cosine of angle A is adjacent over hypotenuse. The adjacent side is 3. The hypotenuse is 5, so 3 fifths would be my cosine. Tangent of angle A is opposite over adjacent, which is 4 over 3. Now, remember, we said that our new trig functions that we're just learning, cosecant, secant, and cotangents, are reciprocals. So the reciprocal here would be the hypotenuse over the opposite side, or if I take the reciprocal of 4 fifths, I end up with 5 fourths. The cosine of angle A is, of course, the adjacent over hypotenuse, but if I take the reciprocal, it's hypotenuse over adjacent, which is 5 thirds. And the tangent of angle A, which is opposite over adjacent, would be adjacent over opposite, which is 3 fourths. And there you found the six trig function values for angle A of the right triangle 3, 4, 5. What happens if they give us a problem and we're missing a side? For example, we know we're looking for angle B this time, so I'm going to put my hash mark up here, or my locator up here, so to speak, and there I am, I'm standing up there now. So that makes 5 the opposite side. Very important you realize this. 12 is now the adjacent side, so things have changed. But I don't know what my hypotenuse is. So I could go back to what I've learned in classes before, and I could use Pythagorean's theorem. Okay, A is 12 squared plus B is 5 squared. And that equals C squared because this would be C over here, which would be 144 plus 25 is equal to C squared. 169 is equal to C squared. Take the square root, and I'm going to end up with plus or minus 13. However, we're going to keep it positive because we know length can't be negative. So therefore, my hypotenuse is 13. Now that I know all of my sides, it's very easy for me to figure out my six trig function values. So again, I'm going to label sine of angle B, cosine of angle B, tangent of angle B, and I'm going to go ahead and put in its reciprocal functions, cosecant of angle B, secant of angle B, and cotangent of angle B. Once again, my sine is what? Opposite over hypotenuse. So it's opposite over hypotenuse. And I do encourage you to write this every single time. 
because it will help you remember the relationships, which is 5 thirteenths. My cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is going to be 12 thirteenths. And my tangent is opposite over adjacent, which in this case is 5 twelfths. Taking the reciprocal for sine, which would be hypotenuse over opposite, is going to be 13 fifths. The reciprocal for cosine, which is hypotenuse over adjacent, is going to be 13 twelfths. And the reciprocal for cotangent, which is going to be adjacent over opposite, which is 12 fifths. And I have my six trig function values for the triangle 5, 12, 13. Now we can do many, many, many problems, but I'm going to just do one more with you. And this time I'm going to use an angle of theta. Now you could call it angle A if you wanted to, but another way that they denote the angles is angle theta. And we're going to use some sides this time that are a little bit more at the level of trigonometry. But they want us to find the six trig function values. So I'm going to go ahead again and I need to set up my triangle. I need to locate my sides and make sure that I'm doing it right. So I'm drawing, here I am, I'm standing there. Have a little fun with this if you want to draw a picture. That makes two square roots of three is my opposite side. All right, two is my adjacent side and four is my hypotenuse. Okay, so I'm all set up now and I'm ready to go. So the sine of theta is going to equal opposite over hypotenuse, which is going to be 2 square root of 3 over 4. I can reduce the 2 and the 4, and so this is just going to be the square root of 3 over 2. Cosine of theta is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse, which is 2 over 4, and you always simplify, which is 1 half. Tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent, which is going to be 2 square root of 3 over 2, which is just the square root of 3. Now when I go to find my last three reciprocal function values, I'm going to come back up here to sine, and I know its reciprocal function is cosecant, so cosecant of theta. And notice what happens when I take the reciprocal here. I'm going to end up with 2 over the square root of 3. Now I can't leave it like that. You have to remember how to deal with 2 over the square root of 3. We've got an irrational number in our denominator, so we want to rationalize our denominator by multiplying both numerator and denominator by the square root of 3, and we're going to end up with 2 square roots of 3 over 3. So you always want to simplify or put it in proper form. Cosine reciprocal function is secant of theta, and the reciprocal of 1 over 2 is just going to be 2. Cotangent of theta would be the reciprocal of the square root of 3. Well, what is the reciprocal of the square root of 3? It's going to be 1 over the square root of 3. But once again, I can't leave my answer like that. So I'm going to have to multiply numerator and denominator by the square root of 3, which gives me square root of 3 over 3. And now I found my six trig function values. Now eventually we're going to learn that we'll be able to calculate that our angle theta is actually 60 degrees. And that's where we're going to be moving in our next lesson. Is when we are now assigning angle measurement to our six trig function values to find their trig ratios. So to recap, our six trig function values can be found by starting off with the simple review that you had from geometry for Sakatoa. Sakatoa stands for sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, tangent is opposite over adjacent, cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite, secant is hypotenuse over adjacent, cotangent is adjacent over opposite.